uh, the sweetest Lebanese friend back in Houston, and he's got the most brilliant accent. I wish that I could do it properly for you because the story would be so much better if I could actually say it the way he says it. But he loves, loves, loves America. You know, and so he cannot talk enough about it. So every time I'm around him, he just has to tell me how wonderful this country is, and it is, and I thank God for it. But he especially thinks it is. He thinks about all, he talks about the freedom of it, the education for his kids, all of those things. And he just cannot say enough about living here. But he ends it by saying every time he means to say the way we would see it, and how about that, he says instead, and so what? <laughs> he, he does it. He does it over. It's just delightful. It's just delightful. He said, I got my pen out the last time I was with him, and he left me for a few minutes, and I just jotted it down. And this is, I'm going to try to quote this to you. He said, I came over to find a life for my family seven years ago, and now my wife and children are here. My children are happy and safe and are in school, and my wife has a job, and so what? <laughs> Perfect, perfect. And see, that is my fear about our topic of grace. Have we heard it so much that it's just, and so what? We're encased by grace, and so what? Well, I'll tell you, so what? This is our freedom here. This is our joy here. This is taking back what is ours by birthright in Jesus Christ that he died to give us. Don't you know how often he stands over us and says, I really, I honestly, I went through a lot for as little as you're taking me up on. I mean, listen, this was a lot, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. My father had to turn his face. I've been through a lot. I gave up my life for this, for you to take me up on four inches of what I died to give you, grace, grace.